Hello and welcome to this Starting Solids online session. My name is Louise Morrissey and I'm the Flying Start Diet and Nutrition Lead. This video will last less than half an hour and will cover when, what and how to start your baby on solid foods. There are some supporting resources to go alongside this video on our website. These include a Start for Life Introducing Solids booklet, a Starting Solids and Finger Foods guide and a recipe booklet. There is also an evaluation form and we would really appreciate it if you could complete and return this form after this session. You will notice in parts of the video the five to thrive building blocks appear. These indicate areas where feeding supports the five to thrive principles. If you are not familiar with five to thrive, this approach outlines five key parenting activities that can support baby's brain development. These include respond, relax, cuddle, talk and play. If you would like more information on Five to Thrive, visit the Flying Start website. Starting solids is an important time for influencing a child's taste preferences and the development of healthy behaviours. The Department of Health recommend introducing solids at around six months. However, milk continues to provide the majority of a baby's nutritional needs. So why start solid foods? To meet a change in the nutritional needs of your baby, for example, increased iron requirements, to develop independence and support the baby's development, to get your baby used to a variety of tastes and textures, and to introduce baby to family meal times. There are three key signs that a baby is ready to start solid foods. These include, they can stay in a seated position and hold their head steady. They can coordinate their eyes, hand and mouth so that they can look at food, pick it up and put it in their mouth by themselves and they are able to swallow food. Babies who are not ready will push food back out with their tongue. Signs often mistaken for readiness to start solid food before six months include waking in the night when they previously slept through, showing an interest in food, chewing on their fists, or baby being large for their age. These are all normal baby behaviours and are not a reason to start solids before six months. Babies' digestive systems and swallowing reflex may not be ready to cope with solid foods and starting too early may increase their risk of allergies, infections and choking. Before six months, baby's milk provides all of the nutrition a baby needs. Starting before six months also requires much more effort with preparation to ensure foods are a suitable consistency. Your baby is ready to start solids if they are able to sit upright and hold their head steady, able to coordinate their eyes, hand and mouth and able to swallow food. It is rare that an infant will show all of these signs together before six months. All babies are different and so if beyond six months your baby is not showing all three signs, speak to your health visitor as it is likely they will still be able to start solids slowly. Starting solids is a very new experience for baby, so to make it a positive experience, make sure that you stay calm. Babies will pick up on any anxiety, so try to make it fun and allow plenty of exploration through messy play. Choose the right time. Choose a quiet time. Don't rush baby and make sure you're relaxed. In between milk feeds is the best when baby is not too hungry or too full from milk. And be responsive. Listen to baby and be led by baby. Never force feed or push them to eat more. Don't be concerned if they do not seem interested at first. From six months, offer a wide range of unprocessed foods from all four food groups. Fruit and vegetables. Vegetables are good first tastes. Offer vegetables before fruit as babies have a preference for sweet tastes and it's important to help develop their taste for less sweet flavours. Offer a variety of starchy foods, for example, bread, rice, cereals, potatoes and pasta. Include some low and high fibre options, for example, white and whole grain breads. But avoid very high fibre products, for example, bran. Fibre can fill baby up and absorb essential nutrients. Include a range of protein rich foods, for example, eggs, meat, fish, beans and lentils. It's important to include these foods daily as they are a good source of iron. 
And milk and dairy foods include full fat dairy products as babies have high energy requirements. Examples include full fat unsweetened yogurt and lower salt cheeses. Breast or formula milk remain their main drink throughout the first year of life. From six months, cow's milk can be used within food preparations, for example with cereal or porridge, but should not be given as a main drink until one year old. And never add salt or sugar to any foods served to babies. Offer small amounts of food to start with. Start with soft mashed textures and a range of soft finger foods. There is no need for pureed foods and over pureed foods can make it difficult to move baby onto harder textures. Include iron rich foods from the beginning. Foods that are high in iron include pulses, for example, beans, lentils, chickpeas, meat, poultry, fish, dark green vegetables, eggs and fortified cereals. Begin to offer these foods on a daily basis. It is important that plant-based sources of iron, for example, pulses or vegetables, are served with foods high in vitamin C, found in many fruits and vegetables, for example, oranges, peppers and tomatoes, as this helps the absorption of iron from plant-based sources. Help baby progress onto a wide range of tastes and textures and include plenty of finger foods. Make finger foods the size of an adult finger so that babies can easily grip it in their hand. Choose foods that are soft and easy to bite and chew. As a guide, anything that can be mashed between your fingers, babies will be able to manage. Start with soft cooked vegetables or ripe fruit and offer finger foods with most meals and as part of a snack as this will help them learn to feed themselves. Your baby will gradually reduce their milk intake as they move towards three meals a day. By 12 months, you'd expect to see your infant eating three meals a day and possibly one to two healthy snacks. By 12 months, they should be able to feed themselves using finger foods and cutlery. Avoid small foods that can cause a choking risk. These include whole grapes, cherry tomatoes, chunks of food, for example, chunks of carrot or apple, nuts or popcorn. And also make sure finger foods don't contain any pips, stones, large seeds, tough skin or stringy bits. At around six months, babies develop a gagging reflex. This reflex helps prevent them from choking by pushing food away from the airway that is too big for them to swallow. Gagging is a normal reflex and does not usually bother babies too much, but the gagging sounds can cause concern for parents. However, be reassured by these sounds as it usually means that they are gagging rather than choking. When choking happens, the airway is usually completely blocked and they are often silent and may appear distressed. This is quite different to gagging. For more information on what to do if a baby or infant is choking, we refer to the Introducing Solids Start for Life booklet on our website. Try not to worry about choking, as a baby's gagging reflex will help to protect them, but there are a number of things you can do to reduce the risk of choking. Always stay with babies and supervise them whilst they're eating. Ensure that they are sat upright all times whilst feeding. And avoid giving any choking risk foods, for example, whole grapes, nuts, cherry tomatoes, or any foods of a similar size. There are a number of foods that need to be avoided in the first year. These include honey. Honey can contain a bacteria that can cause botulism in babies. It is also very high in sugar. Ready meals are often high in fat and salt and should also be avoided. Unpasteurized dairy products and any other products that were avoided during pregnancy and processed meat or fish products are often high in salt and fat and should also be avoided. This includes pre-packaged meat and fish products. If you decide to introduce solids before six months, there are a number of other foods that also need to be avoided. These include foods containing gluten, such as pasta and bread, eggs, nuts and seeds, liver, fish and shellfish. Sugar and salt can influence babies' taste preferences and the development of healthy eating behaviours. Salt can damage babies' developing kidneys and should be avoided. When making family meals, avoid adding salt. If you choose to use salt, remove the infant's portion first. Limit the amount of 
high salt foods such as processed foods. These include processed meats and fish, packaged meals and snacks such as crisps. Choose reduced salt varieties of products like baked beans and tomato ketchup. Sugar is the main cause of tooth decay even if baby's teeth are not yet showing. So avoid giving babies and toddlers sweet foods and snacks including sweets, chocolate, fruit bars, flavoured rice cakes or any other sweetened food and drinks. If making puddings, try sweetening with fruit. For example, unsweetened yogurt with fresh or dried fruit. Be careful of dried fruit and other processed fruit products. These should only be given as part of a meal and not as a snack as they are also very high in sugar. It's important to look after baby's teeth, so begin to brush baby's teeth twice a day, every day, as soon as a tooth appears. Use a small smear of fluoride toothpaste. This is also a good time for their first visit to a dentist and it is recommended that all children visit the dentist before their first birthday. Drinks and cups. From six months, infants will continue to need breast or formula milk. Tap water can be introduced at mealtimes and no longer needs to be boiled. Water and baby's milk are the only drinks recommended for babies and toddlers. It is also recommended around this time to introduce an open top cup to help baby learn how to sip. From one year, there is no need to move on to follow on formula. Instead, offer full fat cow's milk up to 350 mils per day alongside breast milk. Avoid giving babies and infants any soft drinks, squashes, fruit drinks or cordials with or without sugar. Fruit juice is not recommended due to high natural sugar content. If you do decide to give fruit juice, make sure it is diluted with plenty of water. And avoid probiotic drinks which have no benefit or any drinks containing caffeine. Never give drinks other than milk in baby's bottle. Bottles should be discouraged after a year and a free flowing or open cup is recommended to help your baby learn to sip. This is also much better for their teeth. Homemade versus jar or packet baby foods. If you've already bought some supermarket baby foods, you may wish to pause the video and go and get them now so you can use them for this part. But if you don't, don't worry, you don't need them. We will be looking at the labels, descriptions, ingredients, and if you have some there and are brave enough, why not give them a taste? So let's start by looking at labeling. The labeling of these products are often misleading. For example, they will often say suitable from four months, which goes against the government guidance of starting solids at around six months. The marketing also makes these products sound like they are more nutritious than homemade foods, but actually they are highly processed foods that can result in lower nutrient content. They usually have water added in place of food and are based on sweet tastes and can contain lots of sugar and limited amounts of vegetables and meat. They are often smooth textures that do not get baby used to lumps and bumps and they usually lack any real flavour. These products are often expensive and poor value for money, but they can be handy if used occasionally when out and about. Use the labels as a guide to help you choose the most nutritious option for your baby. When choosing baby foods, it's recommended to choose savoury options based on vegetables or meat instead of sweeter options, including those based on fruit. This is to help get baby used to savoury tastes. Use the ingredients as a guide. Ingredients are listed in order of the quantity contained in the product with the highest amount listed first. So this can help you understand how much of an ingredient is in the product. Some products, for example, contain over 50% water and therefore provide little nutrition. You may also notice when looking at ingredients that fruit is often included high up on the list, even in savoury baby foods. This is because fruit is a cheap ingredient and used to bulk out foods by manufacturers. It is also used to sweeten foods to make it more palatable to baby and is another reason why it can be difficult to move baby onto family foods once baby foods are given. Do not be guided by the size of the product as they are often much larger than the recommended portion size for a baby. So make sure you don't feed baby directly from the jar so that you can reuse any remaining food. Remaining foods should be refrigerated and used within 24 hours. 
Food pouches should also not be given to baby to eat from directly, as feeding from a pouch can affect baby's oral health. So, to summarise the key messages for this section, introducing solids at around six months is not about eating, it's about exploration. Milk continues to be the main source of nutrition for your baby for the first 12 months. So don't worry too much if your baby is not interested at first. Offer a wide range of unprocessed foods from all four food groups. Offer a variety of textures and tastes and include lots of finger foods. Include iron rich foods on a daily basis and provide plenty of opportunities for self feeding. Avoid adding any salt or sugar to baby's food. Practical tips for starting solids. A free flowing or open cup is recommended to help your baby learn to sip. Start with just small amounts of water and don't worry about spillages, it will take your baby time to learn. Baby needs to be sat up straight when feeding, so choose a high chair or a booster seat with a safely attached tray. Avoid any reclining seating when feeding baby. Never feed baby in a baby bouncy chair or a car seat. And if choosing to feed in your arms, ensure they are upright and you can see them feeding at all times. It's important to allow baby to explore food using all of their senses, so be prepared for mess and allow them to have a play. Use cutlery bowls and plates that are safe for your baby, such as plastic bowls. It is important not to worry too much about portions at the early stages of starting solids. In most cases, you would just be offering tastes of a certain food, which could amount to just one to two teaspoons. Remember, your infant only has a tiny tummy, so it's important to listen to your baby and look out for their hunger and satiety or fullness cues. Take a look at how small your baby's hands are. It may surprise you that a baby's stomach is a similar size to their fists, so they don't require large portions. As a guide, using a baby's hand can show you the amount to offer. So, for fruit and vegetables, a baby's handful. Starchy foods, a baby's fist size. Dairy foods, a tablespoonful. Protein foods, a baby's palm size. And as baby's hands grow, so will their portion sizes. So this provides a good guide throughout. Babies have the ability to regulate their own appetite, so it's important that you listen to your baby and look out for their hunger and fullness cues. This ensures that children are not over or underfed and supports them to develop independent eating. So, some cues that babies will be interested in food and would want to continue eating include leaning in for the spoon, opening their mouth, grabbing for food and trying to put it in their mouth. Cues or signs that baby have had enough and may be full include keeping mouth shut when food is given, spitting out the food that is being fed, turning the head away when being offered food and pushing food away with their hand. It's important that you avoid force feeding or coercing baby to eat. Also avoid distraction techniques, for example using iPads or TVs to make them eat more. Parents have an important role in the feeding process and helping their children to develop healthy eating behaviours. So take a moment to look at the slide and read these comments. Think about why these comments may be unhelpful. Just one more bite. Eat all your carrots, then you can have dessert. Look how much more your brother has eaten. Here comes the aeroplane, open wide. These comments are unhelpful because they can pressurise or coerce children to eat more than they need. It's important you trust your baby to decide how much and whether they need to eat. An important thing to remember is that parents decide what, when and where baby eats. But babies should decide whether they are hungry and how much they eat. By following this parenting technique, you will ensure that you are responsive feeding. So, let's go over that again. The parents should decide what, when and where baby eats. Baby should decide whether they are hungry and how much they eat. Healthy Start Vitamin Drops contain Vitamin A, Vitamin C and Vitamin D. 
Vitamins are essential nutrients that your body needs in small amounts to remain healthy. Vitamin A supports growth, vision and healthy skin. Vitamin C helps maintain healthy tissue in the body and vitamin D is needed for healthy bones and teeth. It is difficult to get vitamin D through the diet and the main source is the sunshine, so most people need supplementation, but especially those with dark skin or limited exposure to sunlight. Healthy start vitamins are recommended for all infants under 5 unless they are having more than 500 mils of infant formula a day as this also contains these vitamins. Healthy start vitamin tablets contain folic acid as well as vitamin C and D and are recommended during pregnancy and for mothers for a year after birth. All healthy start vitamins are available through children's centres. Contact the Flying Start team or your health visitor for more information. If you are receiving income support or certain benefits or tax credits, or you are under the age of 18, you could qualify for the Healthy Start Scheme. The Healthy Start Scheme provides Healthy Start vouchers that can be spent on vitamins, milk, fruit and vegetables. For more information, visit the Healthy Start page on the Flying Start website. To keep babies safe and well when introducing solids, Follow these food safety and hygiene guidelines. Wash your hands before food preparation and your baby's hands before eating. Wash all fruits and vegetables well. Cook all food thoroughly and do not reheat more than once. Cool food as quickly as possible, ideally within one to two hours, and put it in the fridge or freezer. Food placed in the fridge should be eaten within two days. Homemade foods can be frozen. Make sure frozen food is thoroughly defrosted before reheating. When reheating, reheat thoroughly and allow to cool before giving to your baby. Watch out for hot spots if microwaving. Never introduce a new food at night. Keep an eye on your baby after trying new foods, just in case there's an allergic reaction. Don't save and reuse foods that your children have half eaten. And always ensure that they are sat upright whilst feeding and keep an eye on them at all times. There is no need to sterilise utensils, plates and cups. These can be washed in hot water and washing up liquid, but continue to sterilise bottles and teats after six months if using. As we reach the end of the session, I would like to finish with some top tips to encourage your child to eat well. Being a good role model will help influence your child to develop good eating habits as children watch and learn from the adults around them. Eat together as a family, creating a fun and positive mealtime experience will help your child to develop good eating behaviours. Be led by baby and provide plenty of opportunities for self-feeding, as independent eaters are often better eaters. Offer a wide variety of tastes and textures from the beginning, as this is a key time to prevent fussy eating in later life. Remember to include plenty of iron-rich foods daily. Ignore unwanted behaviour and praise them when eating well. Food refusal is normal and it can take up to 15 attempts for a child to accept a new food. Don't give up offering new foods, even if your baby rejects them the first time, but never force feed or coerce them to eat. And finally, don't use food as a comfort or reward, as this can make unhealthy foods more desirable and can create an unhealthy relationship with food later on. We've reached the end of the session and I hope you found it useful. For any further information or support on starting solids, then please do contact the Flying Start team. Flying Start also offer a range of support with all aspects of parenting, including Solihull Online Parenting and Henry Healthy Families Programme. If you would like more information on these or other programmes, then please visit the Flying Start website. Finally, your feedback is really important to us and helps us to be able to provide these programmes free. So we'd really appreciate if you could complete and return the evaluation form on the Starting Solids page. Thank you for listening and I wish you all the best on your Starting Solids journey.